In this video, I'm going to teach you how to use your four player custom arcade one up cabinet. First thing we need to do is turn it on. There's a surge protector mounted on the back of the cabinet. I'm just going to flip the switch on the back of the cabinet on the surge protector, and that's going to power it up. Now, if we come around front, you should see all the lights light up on your control panel. And if you have a light up marquee, you should now see that light up. The computer is going to go into startup mode and it's going to play your startup video that's related to your cabinet. And at this time we can adjust your volume. There's a little volume control right up here. You can just turn the dial up and down for your volume. So once this video is done, the computer will start up its program. And then I'll be able to show you guys how to use all your controls. The way they're laid out on the control panel here, this is player number one, player number two, player number three, and player number four. While you're selecting games, you're always going to use player number one to select games and adjust your options. You also have coin for every player, and they coincide with the color. So this is going to be player number one, player number two, player number three, and player number four. All right, so you can see now emulation station is loading. I'm going to make sure this volume turned all the way down. Okay, so now the first thing you're going to see is all of your subcategories. Now you can use player number one joystick to scroll through your subcategories, and this is where you would select what subcategory you want to go into. If you want to play a game that's from Sega Genesis, or Naomi, or NetGeo, or Nintendo, and so on. The list goes on and on. Um, this is your option settings. I'll show you later how to mess around with that should you end up having to adjust something. So I'm going to scroll down to where it says all games. Right here. So here's, here's all games. Okay. So now if you look here on player number one, this is your A button and this is your B button. So A is going to act like your select and B is going to act like your back out button. Okay. So we want to go into all games. We're going to hit A for your select. And that's going to give you the list of all the games that are in this entire system. So you can hold down player number one joystick, and you'll see it will start to scroll through the games. They are in alphabetical order. The longer you hold the joystick down, the faster it goes, and you'll see the alphabet will start to show up here. Now, let's say you want to play a game that starts with the letter W. Okay, It's going to take a long time to scroll through over 8,000 games. So you can just push the coin button on player number one. And see it popped up an option screen. See it says jump to and you've got your alphabet here. So you can use your player number one joystick to change this. So I'm just going to, just for the sake of argument, we're going to go all the way to W. And then just hit A. Remember this is always your A button, so that's your select. And your list is going to jump to games beginning with W. Okay. So I'm just going to pick a random game. I don't even know what it is. So we're going to hit A again to select. And that's going to select your game. Give it a moment to load. Don't hit any buttons while the load screen is on because you will end up in a, in a screen to change settings and options that you don't want to be in. Okay, yes, this picture looks like crap because I picked an Atari game from 1975. <laughs> so, but that's what you get for 1975. Um, so that's it. I just wanted to show you guys how to select a game. Now, you don't want to play this game anymore. The only way to get out of this game is to push coin and player number one at the same time. So you hit both of these buttons together, and that's going to get you out of that game, and it's going to bring you back to the subcategory that you were in. Our subcategory we had selected was all games, so we're back here. If you want to get back to where you can select a different subcategory, hit your back button, B, right there. And that's going to bring you right back here to where all of your other games are. Okay. And this will all automatically create a last played list. Makes it easier to find your favorite games, or you can create a favorites list. I find it easier to just go into last played. You can, like I said before, you hit the A button, and that's going to bring you into, see this is the last game that we just played here. And hey, let's play Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Perfect opportunity for me to show you guys how to use the four player setup. So you can see it's highlighted, so we're going to hit A to select. Give it a moment to load. Don't hit anything while it's loading. 
I think the game version that I selected for this is actually the arcade version. So keep in mind, it thinks you're at the arcade. That's why we have coin buttons. So you'll actually have to hit coin. Turtles in a half shell. Turtle power. All right. So there's our turtles. He had to sing that song, folks. I, I had to. All right, so now we want to go ahead and start our game. So you can see you've got players one, two, three, and four at the top of the screen. So that's very important when you're going to be playing with a four player. Make sure the game that you have selected to play is a four player game. Turtles, um, Simpsons, quite a few other games. There were four player games in the arcade. They do have two player versions. So don't select a two-player version by accident and then get upset because you can't get players number three and four to work. So we know this one is a four-player because we saw them all at the top of the screen. So now you're going to hit coin. See, that got player number one going. Now we're going to go, if you've got everybody here, they want to play. So now you're going to go to coin again for player number two. See, number two popped up for us to press start. Now number three. Remember, three is on this side. So we're going to hit coin for number three. We've got press start now, so that one's active. Player number four, four is over here, so here's the coin button for number four. Boom. See, they're all active now. So we're just going to go right down the line, and we're going to hit... Okay, so good. I'm glad that this isn't working by hitting these. So that, that means in the program, the player number one, two, or three button isn't your start button. So it's probably going to be A. Maybe it's going to be B. There you go. See, even I learned something today. So B is going to be your start button for this particular game. <clears throat> so now the game's starting. Now you can see we've only got player number one up so far. So there's player number one. So let's bring in player number two. So hit B. There you go. There's our player number two. Now let's get player number three in here. So we'll hit B for three. There you go. There's your player number three. Same thing over here, player number four. And hit our B button, there you go. Player number four just came into the game. And everything will work just as normal as expected. So that's that. You don't want to play this game anymore? Always press, use player number one, always. Your coin and your number one start button. That's going to bring you back to your subcategory again. Now, the only last thing that I want to show you guys is how to shut the system down. So, you need to get back to your main screen. You hit your B button. If you want to shut this down, you hit these two buttons again at the same time. That's going to bring up your main menu. This is just like a regular PC. You have to shut it down like this or you will damage it. So you see it says quit. Hit your A button to select quit. Shut down system. Really shut down? This must be Windows 10. <laughs> and now we're going to hit yes. Give it a moment to shut down. You'll see the lights will go off when it's done. There you go. Your marquee will stay still up, stay lit up, and your uh, monitor will still have power to it. So if you have an oversized monitor like this one does, you absolutely have to shut this off from the back, because if not, you will overheat your monitor if you leave this on 24-7, and you will do some serious damage. So I'm just going to come around back here again to where this surge protector is and shut it off and you're done. Now, the only way to actually turn the system back on is to hit that surge protector again. There's no start button or on button or anything, so you have to turn the surge protector back on. Just hit your switch on the back and give it a moment, it'll power itself back up. Um, one last thing that I wanna show you guys, if you decided to add the light up marquee and if you decided to add the LED lights, which this one, I mean, it's not very dark in here right now, so you can't see them. There's LED lights under here, and there's also some on the back of the cabinet as well. I have mounted uh, remote controls that are on <clears throat> that are on uh, Velcro. Oh, brain fart. So this control here that's on Velcro is right here, and that will control the lights for the LED lights that are on the back of the machine or on the front of the machine, depending on what setup you have. Now, usually the way I set these up is the antenna. For this particular light will be hanging right up under here so you have to take your controller and put it right up here you can see the lights go on and off that's for that um, if it's not mounted here 
the antenna will be mounted here in a teeny little hole that you'll barely see, and that's where you point that. That's for those lights. There's also a control for your light-up marquee if you have this style light-up marquee. And this allows you to turn it on and off and also adjust your brightness. So you can see it's lit up now. You just point it at the marquee, shut it off, turn it on. You have settings here, 25%, 50%, and 100% brightness. And if you want to give somebody a seizure, you can also hit the mode button and it'll flash and go crazy. I prefer to leave it at 50%. That works best for me. So that's it. Quick instructional video on how to use your game. If you have any questions, please feel free to send me a message or reach out to me. I think I covered everything I needed to cover in this video. If not, I'm easy to get a hold of. Thank you very much and enjoy your game.